Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the shop. Welcome back to the channel. Today we've got something really, really cool for you guys. We have teamed up with our friends at Holly and they have hooked us up. So they just came out with their Holly Sniper 2 and today we're going to kind of showcase some of the parts that um, are included in this setup and we're going to actually bring you all through the entire process on doing the install on this sweet 72 High Boy 3 quarter ton Ford. We're in a 390 big block FE motor, um, MP435 four speed. It's got a 44 HD closed knuckle front axle and a Dana 60 in the back. Um, divorce transfer case, sweet truck. Um, so, back to what we're going to install in this truck. So, we reached out to the guys at Holly. We told them that we were having some drivability problems with this truck, and they said, hey, we've got something really cool for y'all. We've got something that just came out. We'd love to hook y'all up with the stuff that it takes to do this. And uh, so naturally we were really excited about that. And we just got everything in, minus our distributor. It's on the way here. I think we will have it tomorrow. Um, it's also part of the Hyper Spark series of, uh, of ignition components that Holly offers that are plug and play with their Sniper EFI. So first things first, this is the new Sniper EFI throttle body. So they've re redesigned quite a few things on it um, from throttle shafts to better RF signal interference. There's, there's quite a bit of information um, on, on this as its latest release, like improved electronics, uh, better drivability, and uh, so we're really excited to throw it on this thing. We've done quite a few sniper installs. We've had really good luck with them. Um, I've got one on my 1210. That's actually the 2300 two barrel version of it. This is the four barrel. These are rated 650 horsepower naturally aspirated, 575 horsepower uh, in a boosted application. This truck's probably, I think it's a hydraulic roller, um, small cam, I think it's probably stock compression. Um, some things that we're gonna have to go over before we stab the distributor, uh, find out what kind of camshaft it's running and stuff like that before we go through the quick setup. But uh, for right now, the biggest focus is to get this stuff put on the truck. So what all did we get from Holly? Well, we got the Sniper 2 and it comes obviously with its harness and the basic stuff for install like uh, base plate gasket, uh, gasket for your air cleaner lid and uh, you know an instruction book that you know takes you through all of your basic install depending on what style of ignition you're going to run um, runs from uh, factory point style to electronic ignition to a full-blown drop-in hyper spark distributor which is what we're going to use on this application a lot of these parts just came out and we're really excited to kind of see how they work and uh, give our honest opinion on how the truck runs and and uh, get to kind of show y'all how good a lot of this stuff looks under the hood also. So anyway, this comes just the same way that your typical sniper would have, all the basic stuff, a harness, a throttle body, and an instruction manual. Um, we opted to get all of the fuel supply system stuff from Holly as well. So we've got Holly's uh, fuel pump. This is a frame mounted fuel pump. Their 100 micron, uh, 100 micron pre-filter. And we got the little Dash 8 unions, female to female so that we can put these things together. We're thinking we've got enough space under the truck to tie these all together. This is gonna make for easy filter changes in the future. Um, this one up front is their 10 micron. So you've got a 100 as a pre and a 10 as a post. That's gonna keep nice clean fuel going to this thing, just as with anything gasoline uh, or diesel for that matter. Uh, you gotta keep good clean fuel. So this is gonna handle that, no problem. We also got their Holly Sniper labeled aluminum valve covers looking sweet nice aluminum tig welds we've got a pair of those to go on here to kind of spruce up the underside of the hood and to uh shed as much weight as we possibly can off this fe we'll take anything because they are that's a heavy motor um we've got their vintage series air cleaner it's going to top off that throttle body when it goes together and all these finishes are really, really close in color, so this is gonna look really, really good under the hood. As far as ignition stuff goes, we've got their HyperSpark module that's gonna control all of our ignition. We have their HyperSpark gnarly coil that's going to give us all of the voltage that we need to handle that. We've got an MSD two-channel relay. These are these are sweet. If you've never used the, the these sealed relays that um, MSD cells. They've got a couple different variations. We used it on the ranch chain, a different style. This is one that we haven't used before, but uh, these are awesome. This makes your wiring really, really clean. It's really simple. You've got simple triggers that, uh, you know, key on triggers or switched triggers, or you can even, depending on how you have the sniper set up, you can have triggers for other things. 
Um, these are really, really cool. They're, they're kind of low key. Um, very professional install and uh, it, it makes uh, providing power to multiple sources up to 40 amps on each on each one of these legs really really simple and clean so we're going to be using that to power the stuff that we need to we've got MSD wires that are going on these are eight and a half millimeter wires because we've got plenty of voltage coming out of this coil and uh, we've also got our hyperspark distributor on its way and uh, it's basically plug and play you stab it in the hole you plug it in you set everything up you rock and roll now there's going to be some other little small details in between. We're gonna to try to cover all that with you guys so that if you want to do, to do this same install on your small block Chevy or your big block Ford or whatever it is in between, that you'd be able to buy a similar kit and see what it takes for that process to go together. So um, we've also got some mystery gasket fuel line. Looks like we might need a little bit more. You're gonna need a plethora of AN fittings. Um, it always seems like no matter how many you order, you need more. So. In our opinion, the best thing to do is to get all your basic stuff unboxed uh, like we did and we ended up overnighting some more fittings so that we could start on this video today. Like we went to a Dash 8, um, this is a, uh, I want to say 9 16 16 or 9 16 18 straight thread O-ring to a Dash 8 because we're running all Dash 8 supply, we're running Dash 6 return. So we had to get a couple fittings for our fuel pressure regulator. Uh, something I forgot to mention was that we're running the, a uh, fuel pressure regulator on this. So off the return side, we'll mount the regulator. And this is running dash six in and out. Little plug on the side. Um, these are the kinds of things that you're going to want to put fittings in all of the spots to see that you've got what you need. Because um, I promise you, you don't have everything you need. So um, they're expensive to order fittings, but it, uh, I think the downtime is, is more suffering than the cost of buying the fittings. So, Anyway, we've got that stuff uh, ordered up in here, and I think we have everything that we need to, to rock and roll on the install. Convenient little gauge here to help you set regulated pressure. This is really straightforward. It's got an adjustment up top. Really, really straightforward. No, no big deal. So this also has a mounting bracket um, along with all these other components so that we can mount this stuff under the hood really, really clean and uh, hopefully make for a really nice install and a really nice running big block forward. So, um, as it is right now, we're sitting with a old Edel Rock. I think it's got a 1407 on it. It's got a Chevrolet style HEI distributor. It looks like it's probably off of eBay or something on here. Um, the factory powered by Ford stamped valve covers. And um, we're gonna be ripping all that stuff off. Hoping to really make the underhood of this thing look a lot cleaner. Clean up some of the wiring while it's here and do a nice professional install of all the ignition components and the fuel related stuff too so that there's a big transformation under the hood and a huge transformation in how this thing runs. Okay, so the first part of the installation that we're gonna start on, well, Steven's gonna start on rather, I'm gonna do distributor and throttle body under the hood, pull the carburetor, pull the distributor, plugs, wires, stuff like that. So I'll be working under the hood. Steven's gonna be working in the cab momentarily. Well, out on the ground, but working on stuff that goes in the cab. Yeah. So the first thing that we're gonna do is modify this new stock fuel tank that we got. And if you're doing this at home, it's, um, I don't know if you watched the video when we fuel injected my international, but I let the fuel tank sit outside for an entire day and an entire night. Yeah, and blew it out with an air gun and everything else. And it still caught on fire whenever I was welding the bungs on it. Yes. Um, so I learned two things. One, you almost can't get the gas vapor out, so expect a fire if you're at home. Yep. yep. And make sure that you're somewhere where... Someone can put you out? Yeah, be afraid, you know? <laughs> yeah. Gas vapor, whenever you get a big giant hole in it where it can actually draw oxygen oxygen into the tank with the fuel vapor and stuff and ignite, that's when it becomes dangerous. So make sure that you blow all that stuff out best you can, let it sit as long as you can, or buy a new tank like we did and start with zero gas vapor ever being inside the tank. Yeah, exactly. So um, that was the first thing I learned. Second thing, when you put the return line in, you're gonna wanna make sure that the return line straw goes into the fuel. Yes. On my International, it dumps into the top side of the tank and it's such a pain in the butt to get back in there to change it that I haven't. So, I have aerated gasoline like a big dog. Basically, yeah. <laughs> if you could jump inside there, you could take a nice bubble bath. Yeah. You'd be in gasoline, but it would be nice but because be of the bubbles. Plenty of bubbles in there. So. You don't want that. It's hard on the motor. You get aerated fuel. The motor's really loud. Yeah, you can hear the pump change. The more you, know, you drive, the more my you drive. drive yep. Yeah, the worse you get it down gets. like half tank or less, you can really hear the pump start talking because of the amount of air. So, 
we're going to solve all that issue this time. We're doing a couple different things. I think we're going to use the actually the factory suction line yep. in this tank. So it's got a line that runs. Um, this is the factory suction line that would have went to the factory mechanical lift pump. This fitting right here, we are going to tie our return into that spot. I don't know if we're going to cut this bib off or what. I think we're going to drill the hole out because it has a small flare seat on the inside and that's only like 3 16 id yeah and we want to get at least to the dash six which is like i don't know 5 16 yep so we're going to drill this little hole out and we're going to weld that bung this bung onto the top side of this and that's going to be our return because on the inside this piece comes down inside the tank and it gets low to the bottom where it's always going to be submersed in fuel so we're gonna we're gonna rock and roll with that. The second thing we're gonna do is, well, I don't know if it's first or it's second, but we're gonna do both of these things. We've got this is our dash eight, and this is the suction side. And so this has got a nice like half inch ID, maybe three eighths. Can't really tell. It's kind of tapered, more than enough for what we need. And we're gonna take this fitting because we don't want to drill holes through the tank, through the floorboard through the cab mount, through the cross member piece where the transfer case is, down underneath and fit it all between a one inch space. No, I don't wanna do that. We don't wanna do that. I don't wanna do that. So we're gonna take and cut a hole in the very front low spot of this tank. And this fitting's actually gonna sit like this. And for all you dudes who are like, man, you're gonna break that thing off. <laughs> you're gonna break it, man, and you're gonna die. No, we won't be doing that. What we will be doing is securing the tank with the 65 fasteners that it has top and bottom. And then if we think that maybe we're dumb enough to throw a sledgehammer as hard as we can under the middle of the seat yeah, and while, break the fitting off. While lighting a flamethrower. Yeah, we're going to punch ourselves in the face because we don't deserve to have a fuel injected old truck. Exactly. Because we're throwing sledgehammers we, around with our nice things. Yeah, that we know we have back there. And then when we sell it to a guy who's a complete dweebosaurus, we'll tell him, hey, only one thing. <laughs> yeah. Don't throw a sledgehammer as hard as you can at that fitting. <laughs> and you will probably won't have gas no, in there. No, you won't actually. So that would be the game plan for that probably. Yeah. The more you know. Just kidding. But we're not really worried about the fitting. If it looks like something's going to break off, we'll put a shroud over it or something. Yeah. Not, we're talking about getting it running and showing you how to put in a kit Yeah. for now. Not how to uh, build a skid plate for a fitting. So... Drop a comment about how that fitting's gonna break off below. Let's go. We're gonna find the spot that's dead center of the tank and and basically judging from the depth of the factory pickup tube where this tube runs down in the inside, it actually sits off the bottom of this about three quarters of an inch or an inch. So we're gonna be below that. So theoretically we should be as good as or better than the factory pickup was. So we're gonna center this thing up, blast some of the primer off of this piece, weld the bung in the bottom side, weld the bong on the top for the return, and we're gonna move on to installing fuel line and fuel pump. So Steven's got the bung holes welded up in the fuel tank. I don't know what's so silly about oh, that. Oh man, nothing brother. But I've got to start working underneath the hood here. So um, distributor's gotta come out, carb off, valve covers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we're gonna make a little bit of room by popping the hood off. Okay, so we've got all this stuff pulled off and out of the way. We've got the motor sitting at TDC on the balancer. We've got our number one cylinder 
facing exactly the, the rotors facing where it would fire number one cylinder. So I've made a couple of index marks, that way I know when the other distributor stabs down in there that I end up at the same spot. And now we're going to pull this distributor out, paying attention to how that rotates because we want to start wherever that rotor ends is where we're going to start with the new distributor when it drops in because it's a helical gear and it's going to actually tape like turn as it goes down in and we need to land in that that spot right there so this distributor is basically ready to run you see it doesn't have any vacuum advance it's got everything locked out because this entire system is now electronically controlled ignition so we need to set this thing up at tdc drop into place make sure it's point at number one then we'll move on to the next step Holly sends a pretty decent set of instructions with this they're actually really good instructions telling you to look out for all your basic stuff Depending on the style of the distributor, you need to check install height. You gotta make sure that things aren't crashing into parts. Now, this one, this gear actually rides against a piece inside the block. So we're gonna liberally coat all this stuff whenever it goes in there. It's got an Allen in the bottom that splines, well, it doesn't spline, but stabs into the oil pump. So we're probably gonna fight that a little bit, but you gotta make sure that whenever it does install, that it's sitting correct on the intake manifold like this. You don't want that O-ring up above because then you have an index into the oil pump and then your hold down is gonna go on just like it does on, does on this distributor. So we're gonna do just some basic measurements. Whenever we pull that distributor out, we're gonna compare the length, the size of the gear, just some basic things before we stab the new one in. And it's a good idea to do that anytime you're putting an aftermarket distributor or any distributor in an engine for that, that matter. Um, and depending on your application, uh, sometimes you've got to just check install height and with or without a gasket. And uh, in this case, cause it's an FE, this uses a rubber seal <clears throat> that seals it to the intake manifold and it's got a taper to it. The taper faces down. We're gonna work this piece up into this groove, making sure it's all good. Liberally coat it, same with this gear down here. Stab it into place. Make sure that your index mark is pointed at number one cylinder and then you can move on to the next step. So I'm gonna get this one popped out, paying attention to how this thing comes out. So you can see that the rotor's already got marks on it that shows the rotation of the motor as it spins. When this thing comes up, you'll see that starts to move. So that's the direction that that helical gear is making this thing spin as it comes up. So as this comes up and it comes free, that rotor quits spinning right there. So it's not touching the cam, the gear on the front of the cam anymore. So wherever that index is, which is about, oh, pointing at that thermostat outlet, about in the middle, that's where I'm gonna start with my HyperSpark distributor. And as it goes in, it's gonna rotate down into place and sit at TDC on number one cylinder. Now you can really pick wherever you want your number one to be. In the, you can pick where, where number one's gonna land on the distributor cap anywhere, I guess, and just rotate and index stuff accordingly. But we're gonna use the location that all this stuff was at before to make this just a little less stuff to think about as this is happening. Now, if you're fighting this thing and it just won't drop in, if you know that you've got your rotor basically sitting where, uh, when you go to put it in, you see that that helical uh, gear is turning it to where you were at TDC, you can grab uh, a ratchet and rotate the motor a little bit once you've made the mesh with the gear on the cam you've got your index now you just need to index into the oil pump the oil pump's not fussy about where you index it at it doesn't care as long as it's turning it's going to be happy so we were able to bump this over i don't know maybe about three or four degrees past top dead center but um i've got that thing to mesh and now that it's sitting where it should this thing will push in until that thing is seated i'm bringing my motor back to Top to the center. There's zero. This is important because the computer is gonna control all the ignition. So if you've got it at zero and it knows it's at zero, then it can adjust all the time accordingly. Now that we're at zero with our rotor, now we're gonna take this plastic cap and this is how you phase it. So this sets over the top of the rotor and it has these two little two little pins that are in the body of the distributor down here, and then there's this little notch that's in this plastic cap. Now this thing's gonna set on here, and I'm not quite lined up just yet, so I'm gonna rotate, I'm gonna rotate the body of the distributor until those pins land right there, 
Now there's a little bit of slack, so I'm gonna find right in the middle of it, right there. Now that those are lined up and the rotor's lined up, that thing has been phased and we can tighten down the distributor. Okay guys, so if the Sniper, original Sniper wasn't good enough already, it's literally the number one EFI conversion kit that's sold. The Sniper 2 has come out and it's got a lot of really cool new features. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that it's gonna fit this kind of fold. Which it does. And I'm gonna check to make sure that I've got plenty of room for linkage. Now, some of the cool features about this thing, there is a lot. So if you really wanna see a comprehensive, a complete list of the stuff that is changed from the original Sniper to this one, go visit Holly's website and check it out. But just to cover some of the basic things about this, you start by seeing the fact that all the wiring stuff comes out the backside. So when you install this, you don't have a bunch of stuff that's visually not appealing. So the harness comes out the back, which is excellent. It's still only four wiring connections are needed to hook this thing up and to rock and roll. It supports up to 650 naturally aspirated horse out of the box or 575 on boost. This is a new ECU that has improved RF noise interference resistance. So bad plug wires, old car wiring, um, you know, noisy alternators, that's not gonna affect the ECM on this thing this time around. The throttle shaft and plate have been redesigned as far as geometry for a better feel. So that's outstanding. Um, it also, Holly's got what they're calling a, a EFI ecosystem. So this thing has a lot of plug and play modules that you can buy as add-ons. For instance, like our HyperSpark distributor and electronic ignition. Overall, this thing has a lot of improved features over something that was already really good. We are tightening down the throttle body to the intake manifold and what you want to do anytime you're installing one of these is to make sure that the base plate is flat and the top of the intake manifold is flat. So we ran a straight edge across both of them. It looks good. There's no burrs or gouges that are there. We've removed the studs because it had a spacer on it that we're no longer going to need and uh, made sure that the throttle linkage was going to clear. A lot of times you'll have to clearance the intake manifold. Um, this just happens to have ample clearance. Another thing, make sure all your vacuum caps or whatever your vacuum provision stuff is gonna be, make sure you know where that's gonna go. And if, if you're not gonna use it, just cap it off. We've capped everything. We no longer have a vacuum advance. It's all electronically controlled. And our power brake booster is fed off the back of the intake manifold. Only thing left that we have to do is take our time, making sure we tighten this thing down evenly. You just need it snug. You don't need it really tight. You don't wanna warp the base of the throttle body. Okay, so we've got the throttle body bolted down. Everything's cherry there. Distributor is stabbed, so we're moving along pretty quick. Um, I am of the opinion that I think we should check the valve covers for fit and see if the grommets that are in it are gonna come out and work for both of these breathers um, in the new valve covers. There's uh, a couple things left to do under the hood, and then we can start working on tying all the electrical stuff in. Steven's got the fuel tank bungs welded in, the tank set back in the truck, so we're fixing to start working on fuel pump and fuel supply and return back to the tank. Uh, but for now, let me show you these cool valve covers that they sent us. So these are fabricated aluminum. They say Holly Sniper on them. They hooked us up with these. They look legit. It's got quarter inch aluminum flanges um, where they mount. And we're going to, as long as we can test fit them and see that they're gonna fit, and that this thing doesn't have rockers that we're not aware of underneath that are gonna give us a clearance issue. I'm gonna take some cork gaskets. And uh, I'm of the opinion of using a little bit of RTV on the valve cover side, taking the gasket, sticking it to it, where if you need to make a, um, well, I was gonna say valve adjustment, but it's hydraulic roller, if, uh, or hydraulic flat tappet rather, if you need to get under the valve cover, you don't have to replace a valve cover gasket every single time. If you kind of glue them to this with some RTV, and then when you go to set it on there, you wipe some fresh oil across the top of the cylinder head and intake manifold where it meets or on the gasket, and then set them on there and let that cure. So I'm gonna be able to kill a couple birds with, with one stone whenever I do this by setting them on there, checking clearance, and allowing the RTV to cure up uh, on those as well while they're sitting there. Plus, it gives us something cool to look at. Okay, so part of this Holly ecosystem is being able to attach all the additional accessories that you wanna buy. And um, we're not using Holly's what they call, what is it, a PDM, PDU, tire distribution unit. So there's several sets of instructions that come with it depending on what your application is going to be. And so our particular setup is just like this here. So what we've got to do, since we're not just doing the throttle body itself, but we're doing the hyperspark, we've got a coil, and uh, we're also going to use this two-channel relay module from MSD. Um, we're going to use simple trigger wires to actually provide power 
to certain things whenever we do the install. Um, we're trying to map out where all this stuff's gonna go. I've got a fuel pressure regulator. This stuff's gonna mount under the truck. Likely the fuel pressure regulator is gonna mount somewhere where you can see it, access it, and adjust it. I'm thinking probably on the back of the firewall, maybe to the right of the air cleaner, where if the truck was running and maybe you're trying to diagnose something, you're looking right at fuel pressure. Um, and also when you pop the hood, it looks like it's supposed to. So the biggest thing that we're working on right now is trying to map out where all the length of this cable and wire and connections are gonna go, where it doesn't just look like we threw it in here under the hood. So we've got ignition module to find a spot to mount the coil. More than likely, these are gonna mount over here on this side. Um, I think that we can hide the wiring pretty good there. The back side of the Sniper 2 itself has got the connections that we need. This is gonna to go to uh, the screen inside the cab. We've got an extra grommet that's here, so more than likely we'll make a nice clean radius and get that going inside. Um, this is the main bulkhead connector that connects to the main harness. So I wanna find somewhere clean to mount the fuse. The relay um, you know and, and kind of get all this stuff clean where it looks really professional whenever we're done but also keeping in mind that I really don't want to extend the length of the wiring as far as the battery power supply goes and stuff like that So we have completed the installation of all the parts that we just got from Holly. So we've got a HyperSpark, a standard HyperSpark distributor, all of its external. This is the ignition control box. This is our coil. And we've got our two pole relay that's wired up. Remember when you're wiring up one of these relays that they have a bus bar that ties the power inlet to the two powers. It's designed out of the box to be a ground side trigger. We removed that. Um, we're using a key on trigger. Um, to do that. So just look through the instructions. There's quite a bit to take in. Make sure you read the instructions several times because you're dealing with spark and fuel and high pressure fuel. You don't want to have a fire or get electrocuted or both. So um, anyway, long story, slightly shorter or longer. Um, we've got everything mounted. So uh, what we did to set fuel pressure was we used a power probe and uh, we hooked power up here instead of going through the wizard and setting it up to actually turn on the fuel pump. We just went down there and applied power and that gave us an opportunity to check for fuel leaks when you're when you don't know what the regulator set at like we didn't um it was just set out of the box um at 80 psi um which is too high we, we wanted to set around 62 to 65 is where we like to see them so steven energized that thing and i was able to check for leaks up here we ended up having a leak down at one of the pipe thread fittings on the front filter you do have standard you've got o-ring or straight thread o-ring fittings and 3 8 pipe thread fitting so it's a good idea to double check all that stuff have somebody energize the pump look around make sure everything's solid we have done that and cycled the key on make sure that both green lights were coming on showing that both relays were powered we've got power to the hyperspark ignition box we should be ready to go uh, we did have all the cables loose on the starter we changed the starter because it has headers and they had a clearance issue all that stuff has been checked and we should be ready to crank it over and fire it up as soon as we go through the basic setup wizard. So let me walk around here. 
this customer, who's a good friend of ours, Trenton, does not want to mount the monitor permanently inside the cab. So what I have is the monitor sitting out here um, so that I can go through this and kind of monitor what the gauges and stuff look like as far as uh, my base TPS setting. What is it showing for coolant temp? Is it seeing everything it should? Is there any issues or errors? And then we'll adjust or take a look and, and figure out what's going on and, and go from there. It's a lot like the original um, Holly Sniper. There's a few different options that are add-ons, but for the most part, it's the same basic setup. And if you have a mild motor, it's really, really simple. Um, for this setup, we don't know exactly what we have for compression. Looking at the castings on the cylinder head, there are C3 heads, meaning that that's an early uh, 60s head, about a 1963. And I've read all over the place, um, there's a lot of different stuff. I'm not an FE engine wizard, but I do know the earlier 60s stuff had higher compression, higher power ratings, and the cars made more power than the trucks, it seems like, across the board. Your standard 72 was about the lowest powered 390, um, or one of the more lower powered 390s. So knowing what you have is going to um, help you really set up the wizard. Because I don't know if this is a nine and a half to one compression motor or a 10 and a half or 10 and three quarter, I'm gonna set some of my settings on the leaner side of stuff. So like when it asks me what my wide open throttle time is gonna be, typically on a motor that was a eight and a half to nine to one, you'd be looking at mid 30s to 40 degrees total timing. We, um, I didn't check what the HEI was before it came out, and I don't know how the truck ran at wide open throttle before, so we're gonna start conservative. I'm gonna set that at about probably 30 to 32 degrees, and as we figure out whether we have leaks, if our headers leak, if we have ignition problems, or we're melting wires, or whatever the case may be, when we have all that stuff run in over the next couple of days, then we'll come back and we'll start making adjustments for power. It's an engine that we don't know, don't know if the timing chain's good, don't know if it's got a cam that's healthy or not, we're just going to move conservatively, and that's the whole ticket. Go conservative unless you just don't care about putting parts on the ground. Um, for us, we don't own it, so we're going to go gentle. Um, <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is turn the key on, and we're going to go through the setup wizard. Key is on. Does not have a calibration because it hasn't been set up. So we're going to go through this, do the wizard, sniper wizard, sniper two. Eight cylinder. This is a 390. I wish I had the stylus. I am gonna have to find it before I fire the motor up so that I know it's not like in the fan pulley. Target idle speed. It's a four speed standard. My international idle is at like 720, I believe. So we're gonna see how that works again you can adjust all this stuff later you just got to get something that is going to make it run and idle long enough to figure out what's up stock to mild cam it's got stock rockers and stuff i think it's a hydraulic let's see no power adder we have a hyper spark distributor this is the standard hyper spark with external ignition wide open throttle timing Let's just start at 30. Okay, now when I press start, it's gonna run the fuel pump and hopefully we've checked for leaks adequately enough where it doesn't shoot gas right behind my eye. Ready? Yeah, ready. Sixty-three? Yeah. Sweet. All right. We need to cycle the ignition to complete that, and then we're going to be ready to run. We are going to double check and find the stylus and make sure nothing's leaking anywhere. We'll be right back. We'll fire this thing up. See how it sounds. Stand by for technical difficulties. Okay, so we looked over everything and nothing's wrong. Now I saw the AFR ratio was dropped down to like seven to one, so it was really, really rich. I don't know what the deal is. We're gonna try it again, because checked everything, everything's good.
160. So at that point, it's gonna come out of closed loop mode. Everything looks good. Go ahead and cut it off. All right, so we have an incomplete truck. So we've got to put the grill in it, the back bumper on it. We've got some other stuff that we've got to take care of. We got brand new exhaust on the truck, all the piping. And you can see the smoke all inside the shop, like the Cosmoline oil inside of the tubing is all still in there. The mufflers still have all that stuff. So we need to get the truck outside, burn all the nasty stuff off, get the grill put in, get the hood back on, get the back bumper on, check over all the stuff. Cause we did do a transmission while the truck was in here. We put a clutch back. Uh, actually, no, we didn't replace clutch. Rebuilt the trans, uh, verified and checked the clutch. And uh, we put headers on it. We, in we installed the Holly Sniper, modified the fuel tank. We had the bed off this thing because it had, had a hydraulic dump bed. We've done all kinds of stuff. The main showcase of this this time was to show y'all what it takes to install a Holly Sniper 2. And to be honest, it's really not that bad. Um, the most time consuming part is how clean are you gonna make your work? You can bundle all the wires up, zip tie them to the firewall, and it's plug and play, ready to rock and roll. If you don't buy the distributor, you don't buy all the other stuff that, that you can get as accessories, it really simplifies the process but you don't have near the adjustability or the flexibility of being able to jump in and tune all of these things in a network that was designed to communicate with each other. All right, guys, we got it done. We're done, bro. So real quick, let's go back over what all we did to this thing. So we pulled the Edelbrock 1407 that was on it off, the eBay HEI distributor out, took the factory valve covers off, and from there we started going back together. So um, let me start actually back here with the fuel tank. So remember we, we put a Dash 8 suction line in, welded a bung, a dash six return. I would tilt the seat forward, but forwards serve. Well, it's this bolted. seat's bolted down. So a dash eight suction and a dash eight return where the return stays submerged in fuel the whole time. That way you don't get aerated gasoline. From out of there, the suction line comes out of that sweet bulkhead connector, down and in through this, the Holly pre-filter, 100 micron, into the Holly pump, and then out of there into a 10 micron Holly filter, still through dash eight line. That runs up and attaches up here at the front side of the throttle body, right up underneath there. Um, remember, it's got a built-in crossover, so all you gotta do is supply fuel to it and it keeps both of the bowls full on the inside. Um, the return side is all dash six, coming out of there into a Holly sniper regulator, and we've got that fuel pressure set between 62 and 65 PSI, and from there, that dash six runs all the way back and returns to the tank. As far as ignition goes, this is a drop-in HyperSpark distributor. Now, they make ready to run and they make them that use an external um, ignition control box. This is the HyperSpark control box. So, this distributor stabbed in, we put the motor at top dead center, we set the distributor in there, we phased it using the cap and stuff provided. We knew where number one spark plug was because, well, we paid attention for one, but the other thing is, is that the clear lid gives you a notch that shows number one. From there, it's really simple. You you go through the firing order. This particular motor is 15426378. And that's really straightforward. Nice eight and a half millimeter MSD wires, nice fabricated sniper aluminum valve covers, and a nice holly cast aluminum finned little air cleaner up top. Um, using an MSD, this is a, one of their uh, MSD's new relays. These are these are legit, I mean, they've been around for a while, but we use these on every project. These things really simplify wiring. This was easy. Um, they have a bus bar out of the box, so your power wire that supplies power for the relays and your triggers that are up front, they're actually tied together out of the box, so you need to remove that if you use a 12 volt positive trigger like we did. Um, we chose to use a positive trigger instead of a negative. It's really easy. If you can read instructions at all and pay any kinds of attention, you're good. It's not that bad, which is why I had to go back and pull the bus bar out because I did not read the instructions. And he's not that smart. 
Thank you, good night. So, uh, main harness comes out the back, there's that bulkhead connector, just happened to have the studs on the firewall from the HVAC box on the inside to hold it, so we offset some P-clamps, let that rock and roll, then over here to the fuel pump relay and the fuse, out of that is your blue wire in there, which runs across in your harness all the way down, and that actually supplies power to your Holly fuel pump. Yep. It's integrated, it's really, really easy to do, so all you've gotta do is have a trigger wire, so we've got the trigger wire for our Holly, uh, the brain of the uh, Holly Sniper 2, and then we've got our trigger wire for the brain of our ignition system. Now, this this all comes, it's really, really simple. You plug this thing in, you put battery power to it, a ground, you have a trigger wire, you've got to talk to the uh, sniper via this wire, and then you've got this two-wire connection that comes with like, I don't know, 10 foot of lead to plug this coil in to wherever you want. I just happen to shorten all this stuff up so that it looks like as close to an OE kind of an install as we could get and uh, simplified and shortened up the wiring so that I've got all my common powers in one spot. It just, I thought that it made for the cleaner install to shorten up the harness and make it look good. So that's what we did. You got a coolant temp sensor that you need to install. You've got an O2 sensor. Again, read the instructions on the O2. You don't want to put it in the wrong spot. You want to have too short of a pipe after. You want to be able to get a good reading. So as close to the motor at the back of the collector as humanly possible is going to give you the greatest average AFR and that's gonna give you the greatest average running that you can expect out of the motor. Yeah, for so, sure. Um, I do wanna add one thing yeah. that is for, for anyone that might be nervous about wiring one of these, I am not the wiring master guy, Willie is, um, but after reading the instructions and all that, like on a scale of one to 10, I think this is like a two or a three, as far as long as you know how to crimp a wire and plug in a connector, Yeah. I mean, they did really, really good as far as instructions and layouts and all those things. Just wanted to add that for the folks that might think it's a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. I don't think it is. No, for sure. And the thing is about this Holly, Holly ecosystem, I think is what they're calling it. Yep. We're trying to get used to some of these new terms, but you used to take an MSD distributor and a 6AL box and you had to have, is it a dual pickup? Is it a single pickup? Is it a, you know, all these things. Now they make stuff that's so simple and straightforward. You can literally plug in and each one of the instructions basically cross-references yeah. each other. It's like a redundant way of being able to wire something. So um, we did run into a little bit of electrical gremlins. I had the wrong trigger wire. I yeah, was trusting some of the- side though, not- I was trusting wiring that existed on this truck yeah. that needed to be repaired. So I had relays clicking when they shouldn't because it was pulsing off the voltage regulator up here. So we ended up tying back into the original coil power wire, things like that you're gonna run into inevitably. I also had the wiring, the spark plug wires timed wrong. I went, I just thought, hey, this is the number one cylinder on this side, so this must be 1357, this must be 2468. It backfires out the top of the throttle body when you do it like that, because it's 1234, yeah. 5678. So if you noticed yeah, earlier in the video, <laughs> yeah, the, this wiring looked different than it does now, it's because I had it wrong, Yes. and I had to fix it. So don't be afraid of it, just get in there, go gentle. When you go to set up your base settings inside the Holly Sniper, when you go through the, the wizard, if you don't know the answers, call somebody who knows something. Um, call Willie. Don't call me, right? You know what I mean? Don't Sunday, call me. Sunday night, dude. Uh, I help. mean, if you're local, come by, and I guess if you need to call me, call me. But if you don't have my number, ha ha. Um, but start conservative. If you have a high compression motor and all these things, if you have expensive pieces that you don't want to risk having a problem with, call somebody who knows. Um, the biggest thing is, is that you can always add if you just start conservative. So again, we've got our timing set at 30 degrees all in. I don't know what the static compression is of this motor. It may take 40. It may also ping really bad. So we're going to learn. We're going to learn. And we're going to figure that stuff out. So uh, what we have in here now is a base calibration um, based on, well, the basic fundamentals the of what we have. Yeah. We got a HyperSpark distributor. We got an external uh, ignition module that you'll select those types of things and that's really it mild cam heavy cam you know all that kind of stuff so the it, it takes all of about 45 seconds to go through the wizard and then this thing's ready to run and I don't know about you guys but I'm ready to hear it run you ready to fire this thing up I'm ready to let's it. check it out
I just want I just want to hear it. Give me a little spot. I'm gonna make you happy, bro. This guy's not getting this truck back. <laughs> okay, so now what we need to do is go drive it and make sure it doesn't explode or catch on fire. Now, if we did everything at least half right, it should only slightly burn and maybe backfire once. Yeah. So one thing before we go on a test drive, I wanted to make sure that I told you about. Again, this is in the instructions, but you need to pay attention. You don't want to try to set minimum idle until you get above 160 degrees. That's where we're going to go from closed loop to open loop learning. And so right now we've got about 195 temp inside 197, somewhere in there. Okay, we just got the 199 sitting here cooking. All right, so we're sitting here cooking, but you can see that my TPS is still reading zero because I had the key off and my idle air control is at about 4%. Now you're looking for between two and 10%. You want the idle air control valve to control the lean, the leaning function, not have your butterfly valves open enough where the idle air control valve is closed. It's important to allow that to do that. That's also gonna give you really, really good vacuum signal at idle. That's gonna help with brakes. It's gonna help with throttle response. That's just, well, that's what the instructions say to do as well because it's the right way to set it up. So we're sitting at about four or 5%. I've adjusted around as much as 11 and gotten all the way back down to zero. We found a happy medium between four and six, and now it's time to go for a drive. So I'm gonna throw the air cleaner on it, and we're gonna start doing some driving and some learning. Truck, yeah. Let's go. It's 105 degrees, dude. Seems to be running pretty damn good. It's like zero throttle effort. Dude, it's, it has plenty of power, that's for sure. I think down here is looking good. Voltage looks a little bit low. That could be a regulator, maybe a voltage thing. 2,000 RPM. Here, a little bit of timing. A little bit of timing rattle. I don't know what octane gas is in it. Again, we don't know what the compression ratio is. Come on. Sniper 2, get your stuff dialed in, tell us all about it. All right, guys, we're going to come back and give a second video with an update on this thing once we get some miles put on it, and uh, we'll tell you what we think about how it's running and how it's been, and uh, maybe even interview the customer if he's willing to, and tell us a little bit about what he thinks compared to what he had to what he's got now. Y'all go check out Holly's website, look at all their stuff from the new Sniper 2 to their HyperSpark distributors, ignition modules, the entire ecosystem of parts. Holly offers. It's all good stuff. It's not that hard. Until next time. Later, guys. Later. <laughs>